Spanish interpreter. Good morning, Your Honor. At your service, Raúl Aguirre. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just, I want to take your case first if we have the parties, but I don't see them online. Let me just check. I do see a Luna Loon. Hello? Yes. Can you give me your name? Yeah. Uh, it's, um, sorry. Uh, let me turn the camera on. It's, uh, oh, uh, Está pidiendo que se traduzcan quién está aquí. Ustedes. Gerardo Soto del Toro. Carolina Hernández. But I'm not. Uh, Your Honor. Yes, go ahead. Can we please wait? We are waiting for Alba. She said she was going to be joining us uh, here shortly. Uh, She's driving, though. She's about to park the car. If we could maybe go after the first, maybe go after when she joins the meeting. Okay, I'll give it a little time. We do have an interpreter here. So those cases do take priority since the court pays for that interpreter time. So I'll give it a little more time. Okay. Um, we'll call one case ahead of yours if it's ready. Okay, thank so, you. Um, Mr. Agari, we will come back to your matter here after I take one more case. Do you have a few minutes to stick with us? Absolutely, Your Honor. I'm here at your service. You are you are always so gracious. Thank you. I have uh, Kendra Rapp present on that matter. I have Jaden Woodruff. Thank you for being here. Let me pull up your digital file. When I was reviewing this, as that's loading, I'll just let the parties know when we were together last, um, we had talked about moving forward with the show cause hearing on the emergency minor guardianship. But at that time, um, there had been no communication um, from mother to Ms. Farr. We just weren't ready to go into a fact finding hearing of any sort. Um, has our status changed at all? Or are we kind of in that same position? I guess, Ms. Farr, I'll first ask you. I have interviewed the mother now. Okay. Do you expect um, to do a report on that or provide testimony about your opinion um, based on the interview or what is what's your thought? I would prefer to do a report um, and I could get that done quickly. I only just interviewed her. So um, I, know that we had, I know we had this scheduled for the show cause today. Um, but I, I just am not prepared to, um, uh, <clears throat> I wasn't able to, to get a report in quick, quick enough. Okay. So Mr. Ann Ignasto, I know we also, we'll talk about visitation here in a second. Um, but as far as the underlying right. show cause, I do think probably it behooves all the parties to have that report. So you know what you're um, being presented with in hearing. Do you have any objection to setting over the show cause? Uh, no, Your Honor, I, I would need to get the report and go through it with my client and potentially have witnesses at the uh, the uh, emergency guardianship hearing. Okay. Um, so uh, in, in addition to my client, I'm just not sure without having the report. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would like to talk about visitation, but we did say we were going to talk about that today. So let's do this. Let's set a date for the show cause. How much time are the parties wanting and just knowing at least until we get to that point, I would be extending the emergency minor guardianship, you know, through the date, through the next date we're together for that show cause. And again, with a caveat that let's talk about visitation briefly before uh, we conclude the case today. It depends on when Ms. Farr can get a report and I would like to have it at least a week or 10 days before the hearing. So. Okay. Would does September 12th feel doable to the parties? Um, I, I also have the 19th. I don't want to, I don't want to pressure anyone here, but. I, I would prefer the 19th. I have a Wakaiakum County hearing at nine o'clock on the 12th. And uh, is your honor, uh, is there a docket that day? Because that's judicial conference week. I yeah. keep messing that up. <laughs> no, we do not have docket that day. So 
I guess the options would be the 12th or the 26th. I've had to do a few amending orders because I did set during judicial conference week. So thank you for catching that. Uh, September 26th. Uh, yeah, that would be preferred for me. Ms. Farr, does that work yeah. for you? Yes, that's fine. Ms. Woodruff, does that work for you? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Rapp, I don't want to Ms. Rapp, I don't want to update work for you. Yes, it works for me. Okay. So we'll get the show cause fact finding portion set to September 26, 2023. Um, the way I've been handling this, as Mr. Anagnostio knows, is essentially um, my preference would be that it's not over 30 minutes long and that if there is doc uh, testimony that you would expect would push us over that 30 minutes, that it be filed by way of declaration that I can review ahead of time. Very good. Your Honor. No, okay. I, I do know that. So, <laughs> And then um, let's talk visitation. Um, Ms. Farr, do you feel like you're in a position to have a discussion with the court today about any input on visitation? Yes, Your Honor. Um, and I would prefer that uh, Ms. Woodruff uh, present her information first. Let me okay. hear from Ms. Woodruff um, about your input on visitation. Um, and then I will turn it over to Mr. Anagnostio to, to um, advocate for his client in whatever way he sees fit. I'm just going to kind of start off by saying I'm not great at public speaking. Um, You're fine. But, um, this is kind of, so Shiloh, the middle sibling of the sibling set. I also have the youngest son of Kendra, Brian, who was in a dependency case. I'm going to object to that, Your Honor. Um, I, I figured she was going to bring that up, but it's not relevant to this case, what happened in a dependency action in another court. Yeah, so I would just say let's, um, I am going to sustain that mm -hmm. portion. And again, you know, I'm not, I'm not asking for testimony because we're not having a show cause hearing. Um, what I am just wondering, maybe let me, let me help make this more simple. Um, and I certainly, if, if we get to the point where, well, let me ask it, Mr. Anagnosto, are you anticipating presenting testimony on visitation? Because if uh, no. the case, then I would swear witnesses in. Um, uh, my, my client wants a visitation. I'm not sure how your honor wanted to proceed today. I, I had assumed we were just going to make argument about visitation. Yeah. Uh, my yeah, client is yeah. present and could talk about visitation if we want to put people under oath and have them give uh, just their opinion as to what visitation should be. That's yeah. Honor, yeah. Let me, let me ask Ms. Woodruff, since this is a more uh, informal type of conversation with the court, because we're not technically here on a show cause, we're just essentially trying to determine in the interim before we get to that September 26 show cause hearing, what does this court think is in the best interest of the child for visitation? So let me just ask you really pointedly, First, are you are you do you feel that any level of visitation should be allowed right now? Yes, I believe okay. the same level as her other siblings. And what what does that visitation look like? Um, it's every other month for a four hour duration. Every other week or month? Every other month. But we are. I am a you know cousin to the children, and I am you know her niece. So we have an email set up. We are going back and forth and we just had a visit last night at the kids museum and dinner or lunch, I guess more lunch. Um, and then, um, yeah, we, we have been communicating in that way, but I, I just want it to be set for all the children to have the same exact time that one child doesn't get more visitations with their mother than the other child. So when you're talking about visitation, like at the children's museum, is that something where you stay present while kids are with bio mom? Correct. Okay. How often is that type of visitation occurring? It's happened once a month for the past few months now. So once a month? Okay. Yeah. And then what does phone or electronic communication look like? Has not. At all. Than between me and Kendra about an in-person visit. Okay. So it's just, it's not with kiddos to Ms. Rapp. Okay. No. And then the unsupervised portion of visitation, like where uh, there's none of that. 
we would like drug tests and we'd like mental health evaluations. We would like things to be done for an unsupervised visit would happen. So when you talk about, you first said every other month for four hours, Yes. is that, are you referring to visits where you are present? That, yes, that is what her younger sibling is, what is set for him. Okay. Are you, so let me ask Mr. Ed Ignacio first, what type of visitation request for this minor is Ms. Rapp asking for? Uh, she's asking for a couple of times a week at this point. Uh, until we get Ms. Farr's um, uh, report and recommendation. Uh, she has a home uh, where this child uh, had resided with her. Uh, uh, it's uh, She's living in her father's residence on um, uh, Lone Oak. Uh, and uh, Shyla has a bedroom there. She has all of her stuff there. Um, and um, uh, the petitioners uh, have the mistaken belief that whatever happened in some guardianship case that's not before you controls this case. And that's absolutely not the case. It is not the case. Yeah. And I want to assure you, that's not what I would deem to be controlling here. I am going to look at just the right. fact of this case. Right. And so, um, you know, four hours every other month, my client has to go 60 days without seeing her daughter. I mean, that's, that, that, that's not what this case is about. This case is about, we return the child to my client uh, if she is willing and able uh, to parent her her child, that's the standard, um, and uh, you know to to set some kind of visitation of you know a couple hours every other month is just not warranted. Um, so we we need to to uh, have uh, you know some regular visitation until we get Miss Farr's report. If the court's going to order that to be supervised, um, you know then uh, uh, you know uh, we we don't think that's warranted, uh, but. Um, at this point, I know the court's working without uh, a whole lot of information. We're waiting for Ms. Farr's uh, report, but, uh, okay. you know, four hours every other month is that that's the type of visitation that, um, uh, you know, you lose relationships with your child over. I mean, going that much time without seeing your child and they, they just have a proprietary, the, the petitioners have a proprietary interest thinking, well, we got the other child, so we're going to get this one um, under the same kind of plan. And that's not warranted. And Ms. Woodruff, you have a, it seems like a fairly okay relationship with Ms. Rapp to set these up and be present during visitation. Is that right? Correct. We've been trying to, yes, her but, mental health and drug abuse has made it very complicated for us to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Farr, I'm going to turn to you now. Go, okay. go ahead. Thank, thank go. you, Your Honor. So I, I wasn't sure exactly what visitations were being requested. That's part of why I wanted to wait. So, um, my understanding is there are some allegations of drug abuse, some mental health issues. The history has been mother is in and out of the child's life. Um, and I think that we need to have those evaluations and drug testing done before we can have anything unsupervised. My understanding is that um, Ms. Woodruff has worked with mother with some supervised visits. They've gone to movies with the family, they've gone to concerts, they've done these, you know, the museum, they've done these things together. Um, they haven't been on a schedule. They've been spontaneous or pre-planned even a month out. Um, and so they have worked together. If the court wants to set um, a schedule, then I would suggest that they remain the, the four hour um, uh, limitations as they have as the pattern has been set so far uh, and that they remain supervised. Yeah, here's here's what I'm going to do just until we have a more formal report and we can get some evaluations done. Um, I would like to see and Ms. Woodruff, I appreciate that this may be an increased burden on you somewhat, but it sounds like this might be what you're doing already. I would like to see visitation <laughs> with Shyla and um, be every month for the four hours, but with you present. Very doable. I'm okay. Yes. It's, sorry, I couldn't quite make out what you said. That is perfect. We are more than willing to do that. That's okay. we're not trying to cause the bond between mom and child to decrease. We're just trying to stop the trauma from things happening to the children. Understood. I think that this strikes a balance with keeping that bond between uh, Shyla 
and bio mom. And just to double check, I should have asked this first. Do we have Brian Weaver online with us? He hasn't participated in these proceedings at all. Okay. So just as it pertains to Ms. Rapp, what I will do um, in my order extending is at least through our next date, obviously, if something comes up and parties need to address visitation before September 26, note it up. I'm happy to hear it. But at least for now, I'm going to put at the end of the extension order that visitation with mother should occur uh, supervised with Ms. Woodruff um, at least every 30 days for up to four hours. Okay. Your, your honor. Go ahead. He gets one visit before our hearing. Is that what you're, what, what we're ordering? I mean, normally in these cases, it's every week. The supervised visitation is a minimum of every week. Once, I mean, generally, I, I think I see in these cases that what's happened once a month means she gets one visit before our next hearing, which is the end of September. I, so I did not, I, I didn't know you were asking for something different, Mr. Anagnosto. I heard you to say, you were unhappy with the every 60 days. I did not hear unhappiness with the monthly. Uh, yeah, I asked for twice a week, four hours twice a week. Um, and if your honor wants to say it's four hours once a week, um, I mean, you know, we could live with something like that, but four hours, one four hour visit before our mm -hmm. hearing in late September, um, that's not gonna, I mean, my client needs to maintain a relationship with her daughter. Ms. Woodruff, um, I know, so you, I'm not taking into account how prior courts ruled with the other kids in dependency, but how feasible, I guess, just feasible, realistic, is it for you to be available for visitation? Let's say if we did every other week for two hours. Yeah, Your Honor, the only thing that hurts me with that is that it's going to affect the home life of Shyla regardless because she's going to get more visits than her well, sibling. I can't. So here's the thing. I can't really take that into account because she's the kiddo who didn't go through dependency proceedings. So she will be treated differently just by virtue of that. So um, I'm asking you from a feasibility standpoint, I have to take into account that there hasn't been a dependency proceeding with her feasibility. Right. Could you make Instead of doing four hours a month, could you do two hours every other week? We have school starting next week. She has here. She's in extracurricular activities. Um, honestly, no, Your Honor, I object to that. No, I, I agree. Wow. That's yeah. That's what I'm going to order because I think Mr. Anagnosto's point is well taken. This child has not been in dependency proceedings like her other siblings, so I can't. I do have to treat her differently. You being the buffer is really important here until we have more information. So I will change my oral ruling. I will include in the order that visitation should be every other week up to two hours at a time. So that can that we preclude is. that by a, a UA? Yes. Please. Say that again. Preclude that visit by a UA? Well, let's we talk haven't about had, that. We I haven't mean, had any drug testing on. at all. Are we doing that now before you see her? Before you take all the kids there right now, once a month, are you requiring a UA? No, but it's me and my significant other and we're, yeah. I mean, public setting and. I'm not going to do that at this point since we're not doing it currently. That said, I will specifically note that this is very much considered an interim visitation order and that when we have a report, testimony, declarations, I very much will reserve on drug testing, mental health evaluations um, to come before we would allow any other forms of visitation. So I understand the argument. I'm just not going to add a condition right now as long as Ms. Woodruff um, is present. Okay. So I will put that into the order. Anything else you want to address? right now on this case. And Your Honor, just so you know, I'm Abed not is not party to the either. auction. That's, I was just going to ask who this person was, because I did not recognize the name. So does, uh, is this interpreter? Maybe I'll, I'll use you here. So uh, iPhone de Alba. No escucha. Uh, to uh, Carolina Hernandez, who is the person logged in under the Alba iPhone? 
Es mi cuñada y es la persona que intentó darle los papeles a Melissa. That is my sister-in-law and it is the person that tried to give the paperwork to she? Melissa. The pronouns, Your Honor. The pronoun is she did not accept it. Okay. Let's, we, we might, that might be an issue. So I'm going to leave them logged in for right now. Let me, we do have um, Mr. Gojack present who was assigned to Ms. Warden just recently. Can you hear the court? Yes, Your Honor. Can you hear me? Yes, Please. I can. See? So thank you for being here. I know you were appointed very recently, so I'm not expecting, um, well, I'm, I'm anticipating you'll probably ask for more time. Is that fair to say? So, Your Honor, it appears that I was appointed on July 28th. Um, I have made attempt to contact my client at the only phone number I was given, and I've not had any success in contacting her as of right now. Okay. okay. So, Your Honor, I'd be happy to give you just a brief uh, summary. I was coming to you next, so you read my mind. Go ahead. Okay, uh, as, as, as stand by, Your Honor. Before I, I interpret what you both said, Ms. Farr and Your Honor, there's some, some voices that keep, uh, they're interfering with this interpreter's uh, concentration. Can, can we resolve that, please? Yes, thank you, sir. Um, so, um, interpreter, if you will let Ms. Hernandez know, I'm going to mute their microphone because we are getting feedback from their house. Señorita Hernández, señor Hernández, ha, ha de perdonar. Voy a enmudecerlos porque estamos este, escuchando mucho retro, retroalimentación, es decir, estamos escuchando todas sus voces. Uh, anyway, you're, yes, ma'am. And then can you let the parties know I'm leaving uh, Alba in the waiting room until we decide if it's someone we need to hear from. Ms. Farr, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. So mother has not been served yet. There have been attempts by two family members. One of the family members is Miss uh, is Melissa's mother, who Your Honor instructed her to go to her home and pick up the paperwork. Papeleo. Melissa did go to the home, but she refused to take the packet. The second person who attempted was Alba, who is Miss Hernandez's sister. And she attempted to serve and mother locked herself in the vehicle and would not accept the papers. We do not have an address for mother. We only have a message phone number. And that is the phone number I provided to Mr. Goyak. So that's where we're at. We're still stuck on service. I did sign a bench order last time we were together authorizing electronic service, but it sounds like that doesn't isn't really getting us anywhere either. There is no, we uh, don't have an email address for mother. So I was going to attempt to, or I have been attempting to um, help uh, the family and Alba um, submit an attempted declaration of service mm -hmm. and then let the court decide it from that point. The petitioners cannot afford to publish and it's clear that mother is intentionally avoiding service. Thank you for adding that as that was going to be one of my thoughts here, but I appreciate the input. These proceedings have been detrimental to them financially because they're laborers, hard laborers, and uh, they have to keep taking off work for all the continuances. They just can't afford to publish. Okay. My thought is, and I'm open to input from, from the parties, including Mr. Gojack, is that much like Ms. Farr has suggested, the parties that have attempted service should file declarations with the court about their attempts and make sure that those are also served on Mr. Gojack for now. Yeah. And then um, at our next hearing, I will render a ruling on waiving service. I was going to discuss publication, but I think we'll take that off the table given cost to the petitioners for now, as well as me being mindful that Ms. Warden was here last time and was specifically told about these proceedings and given the dates. And then depending on my ruling, we will move forward with the underlying show cause. Again, I'm not making a comment on what my ruling will be, but depending on that ruling, we'll then make a plan for the show cause. Mr. Gojack, would that be acceptable to you, at least to keep you on through that next hearing date when we you could lodge any objections to um, the declarations if your client gets a hold of you, that sort of thing? Yes, Your Honor, that sounds acceptable. Okay. Being mindful of the work that petitioners do, what would be an acceptable date to have those filed at 
to the court and Mr. Gojack and then come back here. I believe if we set this out two weeks, Your Honor, we should be able to get the declarations filed next week as long as um, I can meet with uh, Alba. I'm going to bring Alba back in so we can make sure we have contact information. Petitioners, do you see, and I know Ms. Farr probably already has this, but do you see Mr. Gojack's email for service of those declarations? Your Honor, the petitioner's daughter, um, Erin Gita, she um, has been instrumental in trying to coordinate everything. So I've been going through her to make arrangements to meet with Alba. She's been coordinating everything. Okay. Will September 5th work for the petitioners to come back at 1030? That's fine. Go ahead, Ms. Farr. I think that might be difficult for Mr. Goyak. I was actually going to request, Your Honor, if we could maybe do it the 19th. Um, I have my wife is due to be induced on the 31st of August. Um, and um, I don't know how long the whole process will take, but if yes. it's good cause to the 19th, that would be highly appreciated. Certainly good cause. Um, my early congratulations. So the 19th is that judicial conference day. I'm, I'm slowly learning. It only takes me about eight times before people remind Understanding me. that I will be extending the immediate order through the date of our next hearing is September 26th, acceptable to the parties. That is for us, for me, Your Honor. Para mí, sí. Sí, está bien, gracias. Está bien. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. Entiende. And Ms. Farr? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So we'll do that, uh, move this to September 26. I'll look at those declarations ahead of time and uh, make a ruling on what we're doing on service issues. Um, and depending on that, move forward with the show cause or not. Go ahead. Um, does Alba have to be here for the 26th? Or is you, it, you, the no. attempted of attempted service enough? Uh, I'm sorry. There was a glitch on, on the young lady's voice, Your Honor, an electronic uh, glitch. May, may, would, may I ask her to please repeat? Yes. Oh, um. Uh, does Alba have to be here for September 26th or will the declaration of attempted service uh, be enough? The court's position is that typically declarations. So this is the first time you all are appearing in front of me on a emergency minor guardianship petition. Um, I'm Commissioner Jill Carmi. It's nice to meet you all. Ms. Davis, thank you for being here. Absolutely. I have a, I have a few questions in this case, and so I'll just be honest, I'm not sure we're going to be able to move forward today. It, so I'll start with, and Mr. Is it, how, tell me how to pronounce your last name, Douglas. Oh, you're muted, sir. It's Eru. <laughs> Eru. Okay. Yeah. It's Eru. Okay. And Mr. Eru, who's the gentleman walking back and forth behind you? That is my son. And That's it, his mother. Is that, what is his name? His name is Joshua. He's just helping me on this computer, Your Honor. Oh, okay. So we have a petition here and I have some questions about it. There is an immediate order that was signed ex parte um, and today is the day set for the hearing on it. But I'm seeing, let's first talk about service issues um, I'm seeing an amended petition that I just got today filed that was served on Ms. Davis on September 17. Ms. Davis, did you get a petition in this matter for emergency minor guardianship? Yeah. Did you get the amended petition? I don't believe so. I'm looking right now. And I doubt you would have. Mr. Yeah, I don't see anything. I'm sorry. Mr. Eru, probably the amended petition hasn't been served. Yes, Your Honor. Oh. Is that correct? Uh, repeat yourself, Your Honor. I didn't understand what you said. The amended petition that you filed with the court, has that been served? Uh, the only papers, I had to refill out a paper on yesterday uh, that I filled out early, but I, I didn't have enough information. Right. And so that hasn't been served on Ms. Davis yet. But, Not the redone position, no, ma'am. Okay. And then let me just ask, has anything been served on father? Father has no, uh, father's never, been, never been in the picture. Well, that's not my question. Hold on. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll come to you, ma'am. Okay. Good thing you're here. Thank you. 
but has have any documents been served on father in this case? No, Your Honor. Do you know where he is? I talked to his mother. Uh, she gave me information of his name and his birth. Uh, he, he uses her mailing address, but she does not know his address where she's at either. Um, Ms. Davis, do you know where Patrick is? I, I, he's, he, I don't know his exact address. He's in Port Orchard. I can probably get it. Um, but I mean, I haven't talked to him in years, but I can probably get it for him. Okay. So. Your uh, Honor, yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, I talked to Patrick's mother and she hasn't received anything from him recently. He does not live in Port Orchard now. Well, and here's the thing that doesn't really matter if he is the bio dad, he has to be served with notice of these proceedings before we can do anything. Cause you're asking to take a child away from bio parents. Service has to be made on all parties. So whether that takes some sleuthing to find him, um, I can, I can give you some resources to help with that. I just can't do anything until we make sure everyone's been served. And today I cannot even find that Ms. Davis has been served all the proper documents. So we're going to appoint, the first thing we're going to do is appoint a court visitor. That is an individual who's going to help with the service issues. You probably saw her logged in here previously. Her name is Sherry Farr. Yes, Your Honor. She'll be reaching out to you to talk about service. But let me talk uh, for a second about where is child right now? Your Honor, he's, he's been with me ever since Jessica left July 23rd and never returned. Okay. that's So my question is just, I don't need testimony on any of the circumstances. Okay. We'll get to that part. But just okay. so right now, child is with you, Mr. Yes, Ebro? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Davis, where are you located? In Vancouver. Okay. Are you objecting to this guardianship? Absolutely. Okay. Um, you haven't been served yet, but I presume that you will be. So I'm just going to proactively ask you whether you're seeking to be represented by an attorney in these matters. Well, I can't afford one. So, um, I, so I just going to be doing it on my own. We can look at appointing you if you qualify on an income basis. Okay. I, I, I probably would. So I would absolutely accept that. Okay. Let me ask a couple questions of you then. Are you currently receiving any sort of state assistance? Um, uh, um, I'm on state insurance and um, food stamps. Then you do qualify for um, a court appointed attorney. I don't know who that person will be. We have to, our judicial assistants have to call around and find someone who can take it and that it isn't a conflict for them. So I'll start that order. And then once we have their name, we can get that to you. Okay. Thank uh, you. What is your contact information? While she's doing that, Mr. Eru, question I had for you. Um, you provided some, I'm going to jump into my digital file. One of the things the court has to look at is criminal background, of any adults residing in the home. You indicated that you yourself have not been convicted of a felony. Is that accurate? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Even as far back as 1978, I did, I saw something ping on your history that re makes me question if it was a felony. It was not a felony, Your Honor. What, it how, it's listed on your report as unclassified, but there was a three-year term of probation, which is higher than we would typically do in a misdemeanor. So what can you tell me? Well, I was arrested for uh, uh, possession of marijuana, Your Honor. Okay. What, how was it classified when you entered a plea? Classified, uh, I don't quite remember. It's been so long ago. <laughs> okay. It was, um, it was listed under the Controlled Substances Act, so it was marijuana? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Then, also then on your criminal history seat, I, sheet, I don't see that you included your son, who appears to be residing at the house. No, my uh, son, he does, not live, he does not reside at my home, Your Honor. He resides at his mother's house. Okay. How often is he at your house? Uh, once a week to do laundry or whatever. Okay. Does he come in contact with the child? Yes, Your Honor. Excuse me, Ms. Davis. Do you have any input on whether you believe uh, Joshua is residing at the home? 
Um, I know he's not residing in the home, but my biggest issue with that is he is around my son and he is a fentanyl dealer. That's his job, um, which is one of the reasons why I feel like it's not a safe environment for me to be in the area. Um, I've been clean and sober for a month now um, and I've been doing really well, um, uh, but it's just not a safe environment for me. And I don't feel it's a safe environment for him either if, if he's going to be around. Mr. Eru, what can you tell me about any unsupervised contacts, at least while we're still dealing with our initial stages of this emergency order. I'm not making, I can't make any rulings today on placement because we don't even have service happening, but just to keep child safe while we work through this process, um, I, I am gonna require that Joshua have no unsupervised access to child. Okay. So that means never home alone with child, never the caregiver, you are always present if Joshua's at the house. And I am, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna put that in the order, the emergency order extending. We're just extending the emergency order right now. Again, ma'am, we're not making any determinations about whether this legitimately should happen or not. That is all saved for a date when you've had time to talk to your attorney. Okay. We have probably a guardian ad litem appointed to determine, give some input on best interest of child. So our first steps are going to be service of the amended petition, both on Ms. Davis and on father. That has to happen. I'll get a court visitor appointed. Ms. Farr will reach out to you, Mr. Eru, on helping get service effectuated. And then I will get an attorney appointed for Ms. Davis. Ms. Davis, that attorney will reach out to you. I do have your contact information, so thank you. I'm just I'm going to write it down because as soon as we conclude the Zoom meeting... It will disappear. Um, what's going on with visitation right now? I, um, I have not been allowed to even speak to him. Every time I call, my dad hangs up on me and he's told me I'm not allowed at the house ever. So um, I have been trying, but I'm not getting anywhere. Okay. Mr. Your e, Honor, what can you tell me about visitation? Your Honor, that is totally not true. Okay. Uh, I have proof of that. I have proof of that. Davis, just a second. I'm going to hear from Mr. Eru and I'll come back to you, ma'am. Your Honor, I heard contact from Jessica on August 2nd. I have a new phone number, but there is no, no I've had no calls of Jessica since August 2nd. Okay. Uh, I don't know what, what, where she's getting that at. I have not called, I have not received the calls. So I've never hung up on her. As a matter of fact, I, I messaged her the information to get on this this morning. What, what type of visitation, at least just in this initial stage, would you be comfortable with? Whatever the court decides, ma'am, that, your honor. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to keep, Je I don't want to keep Jessica from her son. I just want to keep my grandson safe. And where she's at right now, she's living with somebody that they have a no contact order between each other. Okay. Well, that was dismissed. It's okay. Here's all I'm asking. All I want to ask is whether, um, whether we can just do phone visitation, um, make sure that that gets accomplished. Let's say like every other day, um, have phone visitation up to like 15 minutes a day between mother and minor. And would it be all right for her mother to uh, be there present to supervise the visitation? No, it's not. It's not uh, in person. It's just over the phone. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's yeah. fine. That's fine, Your Honor. Yeah. I have no problem with that at all. So let's do phone visitation. What number should she call for that phone visitation? So Mr. Eru, I'll just point out to you the person who filed the proof of service of the first set of documents listed a hearing date of September 22 instead of August 22, which is today. Yes, Your Honor. So I just want both of you to know right now, we don't have a hearing on September 22. And so Mr. Eru, when you do file Ms. Davis, or excuse me, serve Ms. Davis with the new papers, just make sure that the person puts in the right hearing date on there, okay? We're going to yes. set the hearing date right now. Yes, Your Honor. Um, to get an attorney assigned, get service done, um, we're going to need a minimum of two weeks. I could set you out two weeks, or we could go three weeks out to September 12th. September 12th would be fine with me, Your Honor. Ms. Davis, are you okay with September 12th? We'd keep the phone visitation in place that entire time. I'm okay with that, but my only issue is school starts August 30th, and he's enrolled at the Gym Tangent Center here in Vancouver where he went last year. So I don't know where to go with that, you know. Your, your Honor. Go ahead, Mr. Eru. 
Jessica enrolled him in a in a school here when she was living. No, I didn't. Hold on, uh, man. Hold on just one second. And, and, that, and that's what that's the word that I was told. Uh, she was he was she was going to live with me, and and uh, he was going to go to a school here in town, which I have, I, which I know where it's at, and I was going to go and get him taken care of and get him started in school. What he, what is your neighborhood school, Mister Iru? What uh, school? I don't know the name of the school right now, Your Honor, uh, but I can I can acquire it. Are you, are, where are you located? What city? I live in Longview, Washington, okay. in Columbia Heights. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. And it is difficult when the timing of these hearings lodges up against school start dates. For now, because the emergency order does um, allow Mr. Eru the school and educational decisions, just until we actually get more information on this case, I'm going to have kiddo enroll at Mr. Eru's local elementary school. It's going to be a, it's a behavior school. He has behavior issues. So I, it's, it's the academy, I believe is what it's called. Yeah. I know where it's at, Your Honor. Okay. So he, he does have, he has a relationship with a special school up here in Cowlitz County. No. Well, he's going to start one from Vancouver because they were, because her and her boyfriend were having issues and back and forth. You know, I don't know what all pertained of it, Your Honor. Okay, look, here's what we're going to do. Um, we are set for our show cause service issue case um, for, what did I say, September 12th? Yes, Your Honor. Um, but I would like to do a review next Tuesday, August 29th, just on the school issue. That'd be That's fine, right, yeah. right now, my order gives you, sir, the school decisions, but I want to know by August 29th that there is a school that he is enrolled in that can meet his needs. Okay. It would be fine, Your Honor. So file proof of that with me before next Tuesday. Okay. August. It'll just be a quick review. So I make sure that he is enrolled in a school that can meet his needs. So you'll need to get some sort of documentation about that. Okay. I show Your Honor. Okay. Okay. So we've got our plan in place. Um, and Ms. Davis, the way things go, as soon as you get an attorney, they can talk to you more about how these cases go. Um, and you are entitled at every step to present your objection to this type of proceeding moving forward. Okay. Okay. So that attorney will reach out to you. I have your contact information. We will pass that on to the attorney and they'll be in touch with you. Can I call my son today? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not home at present time, Your Honor, but I will be this afternoon. Okay. Is that a is that a home phone you gave us versus a cell phone? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Well, um, we will see you back next Tuesday for that quick schooling review to make sure we've got child in school. And then we'll see you back September 12th on your underlying case. And my hope is that everyone's been served and we can at least move forward with a plan. Okay. Yeah, you're right. so now, Your Honor, okay. now I will take the paperwork and file it. Do you <laughs> at the courthouse? You have to serve the paperwork on the other parties, not on me, but you do need to file proof of service with the okay. court. Okay, so I will get the stock documents for the school and then uh, we will have a hearing the 29th of Tuesday, the 29th, correct? Correct. Oh, you're talking about the school paperwork. Yes, please file whatever you have showing uh, proof of enrollment in a school that meets his needs, okay? I will do that, Your Honor, when I file the rest of the paperwork at the courthouse. All right. And then just please make sure those phone calls are occurring at least every other day with mother. That's fine. That's fine, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you both. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. okay. Thank you.